swing and a high fly, deep left center field, and it is gone! Hello, New York! Oscar Gonzalez sends the Guardians to the division series. He's a legend in our game because of great calls like that. Tom, uh, congratulations to the Guardians. I got to think that was one of the craziest, best games you've ever called in your life. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. Yeah, it it was it was incredible. I mean, first off, you, you kind of forgot, at least I had, that there's no ghost runner in extra <laughs> innings in the postseason. And, um, you know, when you've got to go to the bathroom from the 10th inning on, you were kind of wishing there was a ghost runner. So it, uh, it was, I'm, I'm glad, you know, I really liked the ghost runner for extra innings in the regular season. So you're not there hours at a time, but I think they did the right thing. Just like hockey does when you get into the playoffs, you go back, you know, to the way, um, it used to be. And in this case, no ghost runner and, you know, it gave us a classic game and uh, certainly a ball game that was memorable for Tampa Bay and Cleveland fans. I hope the rest of the country felt that way. But uh, you don't get many games that end on a walk-off home run in the postseason. So it was a very special game. You know, we've been talking about you guys, and I think not only from an A's perspective, but I think everybody who just appreciates – baseball the way it's meant to be played where the game is meant to be played where it's an exciting brand of baseball where it's not the three true outcomes of home run strikeouts and walks uh, that's what the guardians are you guys play the game the right way and we're all rooting for you i picked you guys <laughs> all the way up uh, to take on the astros in the alcs in a little pool that we have going just talk about Talk about this young team. Talk about just what the energy and that they, they have this it factor about them. Yeah, I, you know what? I think you nailed it right there, Chris. Um, none of us can ever explain what the it factor is. Um, none of us can say, I know what it looks like, but they have it. You're right. And um, they're a ball club that doesn't feel like they're incapable of beating New York. They feel like they've been maybe, I don't want to say looked on upon, that, that's not the case, but I, I don't think they have ever felt like people truly bought into what they were capable of doing until they went on this run in September. I mean, on September 5th, going into that ball game, we were tied for first place with Minnesota, two games ahead of Chicago, 68 and 64, certainly uh mediocre record at best and they've gone 26 and six since that time and in that span beat minnesota seven out of eight times beat the white Sox in a three-game series sweeping them so that really gave this club a lot of confidence coming into the postseason and i had a coach demarlo hale our bench coach chris say he thought the way the ball club played after they clinched gave him reason to think that they were going to be in a good shape for the postseason, And again, on September 5th, you're not thinking you're going to clinch with nine games to go. I mean, that, that, that was yeah. stunning that it happened that quickly. And then in those nine ball games, they went six and three. So they didn't really take their foot off the pedal. And so they got into the playoffs playing, you know, reasonably good baseball. And look, the Tampa series could have gone either way. You win two to one and one to nothing. Um, you know, you could be talking to Andy Freed or Dave Wills today uh, because Tampa Bay would be here in New York. So I, you know, I think this club realizes that their margin of error is very slim. And of course, when you play a team with a payroll of the New York Yankees and the kind of lineup that they have um, again, you're, you're, you're certainly the underdog, but they, they don't think they are. They, they really feel like they can beat this Yankee club and we'll find out starting tomorrow night. Well, they said he couldn't hit home runs, and all the runs you scored were off home runs. I mean, what are the odds of that? <laughs> you know, two to one and one to nothing, two run homer by Hosey, solo homer by Oscar Gonzalez. 
And um, yeah, so look, I think you're obviously going to have to score more runs to beat New York than Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay and Cleveland are very similar in that they're offensively challenged at times, but incredibly dominant bullpens and starting pitching. Um, With New York, look, there's no way you're holding them to one run in 24 innings, but you're going to have to score a few more runs. But also, let's face it, if it becomes a slugfest, that certainly is going to be bad news for Cleveland. The interesting thing, though, is we were just talking about it, that they're 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 kind of a thin bullpen. We mm-hmm. know the starters don't give you a ton of innings. I mean, the Guardians can make a lot of contact and make pitchers work. I, there's a recipe there. And, you know, if you keep them into the ball, if you keep the Yankees in the ballpark, I don't know how they score. Well, they really haven't, to your point. And. Um, I think Jason Stark had an incredible number since the all-star break. Aaron Judge, his OPS is double what the rest of the Yankee ball club is. So truly, as much money is spent on this ball club, and look, they, they have a good ball club. To think Aaron Judge has had to carry this ball club this much this year, to me, is stunning. And the big news here today, Chris, at the workout at Yankee Stadium is, you know, Aroldis Chapman's not on the playoff roster and didn't come to a workout, stayed in Miami. It sounded questionable if he was going to make their roster, but it's hard to envision a Yankee October without Aroldis Chapman. Does that just, I mean, you're there. Just, I've been talking so much because I've been reading this book about sports psychology, and I've talked a lot about it today on the show where we get so much into numbers and data, but everything's the computer in your head and how you deal, how humans deal with adversity and deal with things. It's like putting that kind of bad mojo. Do you feel it around Yankee Stadium, this whole Aroldis Chapman deal? Well, it sure was the talk of the workout. Let's put it that way. Now, I did not stay for the Yankees workout. I've seen enough batting practice for one year. (laughs) Um, But, uh, you know, and so I didn't talk to a lot of Yankee people. I talked to some. But, you know, he did not have a very good year. He doesn't come to the workout the other day. He stayed in Miami. So he obviously saw the writing on the wall, and it's almost like, he was going to force the issue. I, you know, we're, we're hearing a lot that they had already made up their mind two weeks ago that he wouldn't be on the ball club. So to your point, that's not what you want going into a playoff series. You don't want that unrest. You don't want that to be the story. And you know how it is here. You can imagine what the New York Post is going to look like tomorrow. No. And, you know, they'll be talking more about that than the actual game. Um, you know, I think sometimes I saw some stories, um, and again, part of it's the New York media. There are a lot of good media people here, but I saw a couple of writers writing about, you know, uh, this is a cute little story and kind of, you know, patting Cleveland on the head and, you know, they'll go away. And it's like, well, Cleveland's got a pretty good history um, with New York. Uh, in my time here, they've met five times in the playoffs. Cleveland's eliminated New York twice. New York's eliminated Cleveland three times. One of those times, though, was 2020. I I don't even consider 2020 a real season or a real postseason because of COVID. So, um, you know, we'll see. The last time Cleveland eliminated New York, it cost Joe Torre his job. So I, 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 I guess the way I look at it is, You don't look, at least I don't look at New York as impossible to beat. I think Houston is far and away the best team we saw this year in the American League. And I would put Seattle right close by. At least when we saw Seattle, um, we saw them at the end of August and the beginning of September. They beat Cleveland six out of seven times. They were all good games, but man, were they impressive. And, um, uh, you know, we'll see how this goes, but I think this is a better matchup for Cleveland than, say, if they were playing Houston. You know, and I, 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 we so appreciate your time there in New York. I'm sure I hope you got some great dinner reservations for tonight. <laughs> you uh, let, 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 let's end on this. Terry Francona, the man, I mean, obviously was here in Oakland for one year, 
We know how we know with the baseball mind, what he's done with the Red Sox. Uh, I've been actually watching the last dance and uh, he's in there managing uh, Michael Jordan back yeah, in the day. But just what what makes him so special where he truly is a great leader of men? His communication skills, Chris, are second to none. Um, you know where you stand with Tito. He doesn't micromanage his coaches. He lets his coaches coach. And we have a really good coaching staff. And, you know, Tito's not a guy that micromanages. And it's not about Tito. It's always about the players. And players know that. And they know a fraud when they see one. And when a manager talks about it, it's all about the players. And the players are like, yeah, but why is it always about you? You know, it's never that way with Tito. He's so genuine. He doesn't feel like he's above anybody. And he's a simple guy to play for. Play the game hard. Play the game the right way. And Tito never talks about what the club doesn't have or what the club can't do. He talks about what they have and what they can do. And it may be hard, but we can figure out a way to overcome obstacles and find a way to win. And I, I, I just think he... He's an amazing manager from the standpoint, this club set a major league record. It's the only club in the history of postseason baseball that had 17 rookies make their major league debut. Normally, that means you're going to lose 100 games. And yet he's also proven he can win in a big market with a big payroll club with all the egos that are involved with what he had to deal with in Boston. Not many guys that can do what he does and – it starts from day one in spring training, and guys guys know that, look, I'm never going to play for anybody better than this guy, and they buy in. On your way out, you're a Big Ten guy. In 2024, <laughs> how much are you looking forward to that classic matchup of, like, UCLA Rutgers or USC Indiana? That's Big Ten football right there. <laughs> I am so disappointed in college sports. Um, I don't know about you folks. I mean, look, I grew up a farm boy in Wisconsin, and it was a big day on New Year's Day where we all gathered around the seven of us to watch the Rose Bowl. And, you know, Wisconsin played in it one time in 63 when I was just a little guy. And <clears throat> they didn't play in it again until – you know, Barry Alvarez 30 years later. Ron but, Dane. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, but that was to me the essence of college sports, January 1st, what the bowl games meant, you know, what the conferences meant. I, I, I think it's horrific to see what we're doing in college sports. I did Big Ten basketball for 25 years. And finally, after 2016 World Series, decided that was enough. And part of it was and I'm, I'm not begrudging any of these schools. I did not want to go to Rutgers. I did not want to go to Maryland. Um, that that wasn't fun for me to have to to fight those kind of traffic issues. And and it just it didn't feel the same anymore. And to think that the Pac-10 or the Pac-12 um, isn't really going to exist the way we always grew up with it, you know, the Big 12. Heck, I remember the Southwest Conference, and I, I just. Guys, I, I don't I don't know what the end game here is. What is it only about the college football playoff and then everybody else can kind of go to hell? I mean, I was lucky enough to have two boys play division one college baseball in the Mid-American Conference. And, you know, Kent State went my oldest boy started on the team that went to Omaha in 2012. And along the way, they eliminated Kentucky, they eliminated Oregon. They eliminated uh, Florida in Omaha. And, I mean, that was a big deal for a, a mid-major to do that. We're taking all of that away now. And, and so I, I think it's really disheartening that money has done what it's done. We're, this isn't amateur anymore, guys. This is, you know, we all know what it is. It, you know, so And I don't know how you coach anymore. How do you coach with, you know, name, image, and likeness? Um, I think the kids deserve to get more, but we've taken it to an absurd level now. Other than that, it's great. <laughs> <laughs> 
Rutgers UCLA volleyball. Cannot wait for that. Guys, uh, how does anybody talk out there about travel? Talks, how, does, you, how do these kids go to the to the Midwest all the time? There's only one close game, and that's Southern Cal. How how are they going to do that? Well, and to be honest with you, the traffic in L.A., it might be longer to get from UCLA to UCLC <laughs> than it is to get to, like, Iowa. <laughs> oh, man. Well, I- I'll tell you what. We're all rooting for you. You Thank know, we're, you. We, we, we love you guys. We hope you get past the Yankees. We're going to be rooting for you. And as we always say, you're one of the legends in our game. And for you to Thank come you. on our program always means so much. Go enjoy that great dinner in New York City, and good luck to you guys. Well, thank you. Um, I, I'm glad you're rooting for us. I don't think the powers that be want New York not. In fact, if we're ahead three games to two, I think they're going to turn it into a best-of-seven series just to make sure New York's got another shot because they they want that television market. <laughs> they may. They, if you guys go to extra innings, they may give the Yankees the go runner. <laughs> Good call. <laughs> Take care, my friend. You be well. Thanks, guys. I enjoyed it. Oh, the great Tom <laughs> Hamilton, one of the best. He is the best.